Here's the first expansion for Dracula's America called Hunting Grounds. It's soft cover, perfect bound, about 96 pages. And I'm not going to go through the story of what this is about. Um, I'll have it here. Now you can kind of read it. If you want to, you can pause it. Uh, what's going to be in this book is going to be a couple of new factions, some modifications to Skinwalker tribes, if you'd like to, some new weapons, including melee weapons, uh, some new powers, some new skills, uh, the whole deal with this spirit realm, and also there's a narrative campaign, which is seems pretty interesting. So this is what's going to be inside of Dracula's America's Shadows of the West Hunting Grounds expansion. Here are the table of contents, and this is not the only page I'll flip it over to the other page, but you got your introduction setting. Here's where your battles are going to be taking place. Some new game rules, including close weapons. So people have been asking about that, and so now there are going to be some close weapons that you can have. Some new arcane powers, new factions. Really, it's two with a modification on a Skinwalker tribe. Um, the new campaign rules about the territories and this new magical power. And if we go over here, you have some new the outlaws and some new mercenaries you can hire. And then a narrative com campaign, which I like narrative campaigns. And what happens at the end and your uh, sheets to fill out when you play the game. And this is the introduction. The setting section basically doesn't give any rules or anything. Basically outlines the new areas like the Black Hills, Convergence, Deadwood City, the hunting grounds in an animus, I guess is how you would say. And so that's basically, it's just giving you history of those territories. This is the new game rules section. And it goes a lot of about what's the hunting grounds and the rules they apply there. One of them is that there's two different realms you can be battling in or doing or interacting in. That's the physical realm and the spirit realm. And how you enter the spirit realm is if you draw a red card, you can go into the spirit realm or out of the spirit realm. And the Skinwalker tribe has a special rule that they can go to, into or out of on their turn. Um, things in the spirit realm cannot interact with things in the physical realm. So if there's a wall in the physical realm, they could just walk through it. If it's a wall in the spirit realm, they cannot walk through it and they can't talk to people on the spirit or in the physical realm and vice versa if you're in this physical realm you can't interact with anything in the spirit realm so you have that way of going in and out now the hunting grounds does have its own perils is that if you're in the spirit realm and you become a casualty you know and then you can roll for injury table at the end of the game if you roll a certain roll and fail you're out for the rest of the game Another one is uh, summoning can become more dangerous in this game. Uh, you can summon a creature, and we'll kind of go to that rule right here. You can summon a creature, but it could possibly be out of your control. And they did add a few more creatures to be able to summon. There's also the perils. You can add a new... Um, list that if you fail a roll on the summoning table, you know, uh, uh, you really fumbled with it, you can uh, have this come up instead of the other uh, things. And they said this is a little more dangerous. And then finally, there's, uh, well not finally, but there's some new creatures that has been added to the game. They've also added in some new weapons that include the musket, some thrown weapons, and also what people have been asking about, melee weapons. So there are going to be melee weapons in this. Another thing they've got is we've got some new arcane uh, powers that, it, that you can add into the game. So those are the new things that is in this part of the new game rules.
There are two new factions in this supplement for Dracula's America, plus a modification to the Skinwalkers tribe. So the first one is the Forsaken. And non-Native Americans cannot join this, uh, this faction. They basically, like the Skinwalker tribes turn into a bear or wolf. These guys involuntarily turn into those creatures and they start the game in that form. Uh, the beast form, they call it. And at certain points in the game, they may become kind of berserk and attack their own posse or whoever's closest and then revert back. But you do get bonuses for being in that form. But there's also some penalties. And the next one would be the Shadow Dragon Tong, which are basically Chinese. And they kind of have a... They understand the spirit realm somewhat. And they also can get tattoos to get special abilities. The last one would be the modifications to the Skinwalker tribe, and they say it's optional uh, if you want to. There's three of them. The first one is the Plains and Prairie tribe. Basically, you get horses at a discount, and instead of being able to turn into wolf or bear form, you can only turn, in, turn into a buffalo form, which gives you some special abilities. There's also the Woodland and Plains tribes, and they count their grit die one better than they would normally be for making nerve tests, and also they can hire a Sasquatch. And finally, the Desert tribe, they can move five inches instead of four inches, and they can only have one Skinwalker model that can transform, but they gain a Shaman to replace the other one. They gain a Shaman, and that, are, that is Arcanist. So those are the new factions that's available in this supplement. All right, here are some new campaign rules. The first one is there's a couple skill lists. One of them is I'm showing here is the writing skill list, but there's also a leadership skill list. There is some new gear, which we'll take a look at here. This is not all of it, because there is a Gatling gun you can buy too which is not listed here, but there's a Gatling gun you can purchase. So they do have thrown weapons, and they do have like sword or spear, two-handed weapons, so you get in chopsticks, I guess. So you can um, get into close combat with those weapons. There's some new hired guns, which are shown here. And a medium and those. So those are the new hires you can get. There's also in between quests you can go in between games, like not quests. In between games you can go on a vision quest. You can, and if you're successful, you can get a special ability. If you fail, the worst that could happen is your character is removed from the game. So it's it's a there's some little neat abilities there you could get, or it could be disastrous for your character. And then the next thing would be some um, encounters you can have in, you know, two of a kind, three of a kind, and so forth. Depending upon what you get, this is going to be the encounter. This is just one of the tables. So they've got new encounter tables for being in this new territory. This section goes over territories, and basically you start with five territories. And you're going to roll on this chart here to see which territories you have, what they are. You're going to choose one as a hideout, and you battle each other. And if you win a game, you take a territory from the opponent. If you lose a game, they gain one of your territories. And at the end of the campaign or game or wherever your games you're playing, you then see who won. Um, you can, between sessions, you can spend points to upgrade your hideout. So there's this option here. And then there's also, between games, there's territory events that could happen that could be good or bad um, for your territory. This section goes into finding, I guess it's called animus, um, 
basically this arcane stuff that you can either, if you get it, you can either sell it or keep it. And they talk about using it there. You can also, in between uh, games, you can become an outlaw. So whoever's got the highest infamy rolls in this table and they become clear, suspicious, or outlaw, and then those rules are over here. Uh, if you become an outlaw, that's something you really don't want to be in this game, it seems like, because they go over the rules there about that. But there's a way you could get out of being an outlaw. They also talk about bounty hunting in between games. You can decide, you know, I'm going to send this model off to go do some bounty hunting, and they got rules for that. So maybe you get a little extra income this way. Another interesting thing in this is mercenaries. You can actually hire out your models or your men from your posse to another posse. Now some won't work together as they show here, but say you got a really awesome dude that this person wants to use, you can gain some money by saying, hey, I'll, I'll hire him out to you. And so they have the rules for that. And finally they have mercenary drifters. If the campaign's over, you can nominate one of your models to become a mercenary that can be hired. Just like, you know, you find mercenaries in these books, you can make it where it's your own personal groups, mercenaries. So if you have a really good character, you can have that character be, that can be out there hired by you in future games or by your opponents. Here is the narrative campaign section, and this is really kind of interesting. Now, I have not read the scenarios because I kind of want to be, I want to play them and experience them. But what's kind of interesting is this is going to be an ongoing deal. It's just not the supplement. It's each supplement will continue this story. So what you're going to first do is, are you on the side of Alliance of, uh, Alliance of Order or Alliance of Chaos? And you can see what they want to do here. And once you pick that, you're stuck not only for this campaign, but the continuing campaign until, they say like until the last uh, book. I'm going to try to find it um, right here. So as you play through each of the expansion books, this is an expansion book, you should keep running Total Alliance Destinies points. So it's not only this campaign it's the continuing story. So I'm wondering if they're leading up to where you're actually going to either try to keep Dracula in power or you're going to try to take Dracula out. So I think maybe they're working towards that. I don't know. But from what I get is this is book one of a series. Let's think of it that way. So I'm not going to show you because I don't really want to find out myself yet. But here's kind of the highlights. So the first one, the first scenario is the ghost town, a spectral, a spectral town has appeared in the area and is rumored to hide lost treasure. Then after that you go to the key. The posses must track down the elusive spirit walker before their rivals do. And you can go, you can see here, you can stop it and read it. Uh, eight is, what this is, is if you just want to play one off, you roll a d8 and let's say you roll a six. This is the adventure you're going to do. But if you want to do the story that's happening in this game, you'll do these in order. So this is uh, its kind of really interesting about this narrative campaign. And at the end of this book, and I don't want to show it, and I don't want to read it yet, but it shows that what happens after you're done with these scenarios, what happens if the Alliance Order wins? Or what happens if the Alliance of Chaos wins? So very, very interesting what they're trying to do here with this narrative campaign. I didn't know what to expect when I saw this. I was like, okay, let's see. It's got a couple new posses, which I kind of understand, but sometimes you're like, I wish this was at the very beginning of the game. And then another supplement comes out, it's new posse. And it's like, oh, I wish this was at the beginning because I'd rather be playing that posse instead of this other one from the very beginning. Um, so I kind of can understand that, but I also understand putting in new posses because new ideas come up and all that. So it's got its pluses and minuses there. The weapons, I'm very happy to see that melee weapons have made it into the game. That is something that was really, really needed because people were asking, well, what about knives or stuff like that? So I'm glad to see that they did make that in thrown weapons. 
the setting is very interesting with the spirit and physical realm and how they're separated. And sometimes you need to be back in, the, I'm thinking, you need to be back in the physical realm and you can't get that red card if you need it. But I guess you could play it. But just think if you don't have that red card and you need to get out of that spirit realm. So I like the, the setting they've done with the hunting grounds and the, between the spirit and the physical. The thing that really has me interested in this is that ongoing campaign. This is just like book one of that story that's happening. So we've got this spirit or whatever is trying to do something in book one. So what's going to happen in book two? And we kind of, kind of let you see, there's kind of a clue coming here with this. And it's going to come out in July. So we've got some more of the stories going to happen. And I'll kind of Zooming in there so you kind of can see what's happening in this one. So I'm very excited about the continuation of this Dracula's America.